Okay, welcome back to another video with Furnace Tech. I hope that you're liking the video so far. Um, if there's anything specific that you guys would like me to make a video about, um, just put it in the comments below. Um, and today's video is going to be about your boiler pump. This is a very common pump that you'll see on most boiler systems. It's a 1558 Grundfuss pump. Also, a 007 Taco pump is very common. So I'll um, put a link in the description below if you ever need uh, to replace these pumps. And um, this is what it looks like. So this is a centrifugal pump, which means it has an impeller inside of the pump that as it spins, it um, pushes the fluid on the outside of the impeller. Um, so it uses a centrifugal rotating motion to make the fluid flow through the system. So in order to figure out the flow direction on a centrifugal pump, if you do not see the arrows, it comes in on the bottom here, and then it goes up in the center, and then it goes into the impeller, and then it comes out through the discharge here. So on the outside of the electrical box, you're gonna see a speed selector switch. So it has a low, a medium, and a high speed. So depending on how much uh, flow you need on your system, you can set the pump up. So what's in the box when you buy one of these circulator pumps? Well, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have two gaskets, and you're also gonna have a little check valve. So this check valve goes on the discharge side of this pump. You'll see inside of here where it's nice and flat. What you end up doing is taking the check valve and just slide it straight down inside of the discharge. I'll go ahead and put it in. You just give it a good push. So now the check valve has been installed. Now you do not always need to have the check valve installed in your system, it just really depends um, on, on your system and the application. So the check valve will prevent any kind of flow through the pump whenever the pump is off. So if you have a lot of heated fluid in your system uh, and you have like a natural circulation, this check valve will prevent that from happening. Let's go ahead and take a look inside the electrical box. This is a brand new pump, so the screws coming from the factory are not installed. They're usually inside the box. So if I pull this off, okay, there's the screws inside. This is inside the box cover. There's the screws. You have like a little, you have a little, you have a capacitor in here. And then here's where you hook up your power wires. So you have a ground a neutral and line voltage coming in. And then this is your speed selector here. Pull the motor off and see what's inside. What you're gonna need is a little Allen wrench. So you can take these little screws off around the outside of the motor. I'll go ahead and do that. So once I get it all pulled apart, um, I will do a close up view uh, reassembling the motor so you can see how it goes back together. Okay, so I got the screws out. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull it apart. Sometimes it can be really tight. Um, this one here, I think it's gonna come apart pretty good. There we go. So this is inside of the volute. And you can see the center here, um, the flow travels into the inlet of this volute and it comes up right here in the center underneath where this impeller is. And then as the impeller spins, it's gonna push the fluid through this little hole and it's gonna come out the discharge. So here we go, here's the impeller. So these pumps have a cartridge that actually goes inside of this motor housing. And you have a little gasket here, a little rubber gasket, you can see that. Okay, so I got it broke loose. Um, so what I did is I took a screwdriver and I put it right underneath these little tabs here You have to be careful. You don't damage the gasket So you put it right under those tabs and then you just kind of pry it up Okay, do it evenly just go a little bit on each one and then it'll pop out. Okay So now let me pull this out Now you can see the rotor you can see inside where the windings of the motor are Okay now I'll take off this little electrical box so you can see what's underneath there. Just pop this off. There we go. So here's the back. 
you can see where it just plugs right into the motor. And this gasket kind of came off. So now you can see the so now you can see the back here. See the little plug? It plugs right into the back of the motor. Okay. And here's a little plug on the motor side. So everything in here is pretty sealed. Um, if you look at an angle there, you can see the windings inside. Okay. So there you have it. And then here is the rotor. So the magnetic field inside of the windings on the motor uh, make this rotor here spin. And as it spins, you can see the impeller spin here. Okay, there you go. So let's go ahead and put this motor back together. So here's a look at the motor all pulled apart. So here's the motor windings. The rotor and impeller. The volute. The electrical box and the capacitor. A little plug here that ties to the motor. Here's the cover and the speed selector switch. And a few little screws. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the motor windings and I'm going to put the rotor and the impeller back inside. Next, I'm going to mount it right onto the volute. And this, this motor, the windings here can be mounted in any direction here. So if the pump was installed horizontally this way in any horizontal direction, you can just rotate to get the electrical box whichever direction you want, and then you can just remount it. So in this case, I'm just gonna mount it here in this position. Okay, so let me put the screws in. Okay, you're gonna wanna get it snug, and then go to the opposite side of the motor. You wanna tighten it down nice and even. You wanna make sure you get a good seal. So after you get it snug, you're just going to go ahead and tighten it down. When you tighten it, still alternate the corners. That way it pulls it in nice and straight. Okay. Next step is going to be to mount the electrical box. So you notice you have a, a seal right here. Make sure that's nice and um, straight and so it doesn't get cut. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug it back into the motor. Okay. Then I have two screws. It's kind of tricky. When you have big hands, it's hard to um, get into small areas. These are Torx screws. Okay, make it snug. Don't over tighten it. Okay. So then you got your electrical box. Now when you put the electrical box on, you're going to want to make sure that you turn this um, speed selector switch to get it lined up. Otherwise, if it's not lined up, you'll see, you'll see it actually um, push up. You see how it's pushed up here? You want to just turn it until you find out where it needs to be to line it up. Okay, and then you're good to go.
Now, there's two little screws that go on both sides of this little cover, but um, we're not gonna put them in because as soon as we install it, we actually need to pull this off and wire it up. And then these two gaskets, what they, they actually mount right here in this groove on the pump when you go to put it in on the, on the flange, okay? So you don't put these on until you're ready to install it. Otherwise, they'll just um, fall out. Here's a quick tip. If you're not sure if this pump is working, Grunfuss makes a tool. This little tool on the back side of the pump while it's running, it will actually spin this little indicator here based on the magnetic field. So that was a close-up look inside of a boiler circulator pump. Um, don't forget to subscribe, and um, I appreciate you taking the time to watch.